So I sat in these seats in the same room 12 years ago for the same ceremony. Uh, so to my fellow members of La Sociedad Honoraria Hispanica, felicidades. To the new inductees to the Société Honoraire de Français, felicitations. And congratulations to the inductees of the Chinese. Bong <laughs> how's that? I am so thankful uh, to Senora Ayers and Madame Tess for having me back to speak here. Um, it feels funny being invited back. I was actually back for my 10 year reunion in November. It doesn't feel like it's been that long or that I have enough to, uh, to really share to stand up here, but I'm going to give it a try. So, uh, I want to talk a little bit about my time here. Um, kind of think about some of the, uh, the gifts that I feel like I've gotten from being a language student through the years starting here. Uh, and then I'll give some advice. So, I've got really great memories of my time at GA. I spent six years here, starting in seventh grade. I uh, came from Addington School District, and my first Spanish class was with Senora Guaynel, who I see over here. So, I was a year behind everybody. I took Spanish with the sixth graders, and as Mrs. Ayers actually already sort of alluded to, I think I spent more time thinking about my sixth grade crush that I had in that class than I did any verb conjugations. Um, but throughout the year, I started to pick up some different vocab words, um, string together some sentences. I got to practice with my older sister who was studying Spanish at that point, and eventually it started to come naturally, much more so than the Algebra one class I was taking down the hall. I never got better at math, but I did get better at Spanish. So I really doubled down on things. Um, by the time I got to high school, as Mrs. Ayer said, I caught up to my own class. And I actually remember there were two guys, Dan and Brian Lipschitz, not related, but they were the two smartest people in my class, or at least the two smartest guys in my class, both Patriot Scholars. And I put a target on their backs because I knew that if I wanted to be the best, I had to at least do as well as they did. So I got a little competitive. Um, but despite that competition, we had a great little club of people and we would chat in Spanish and uh, it was kind of interesting at that point, especially at age 15, that you could say things in another language that you might not say out loud in English. Um, so that was one of the first gifts I felt like I got from speaking a foreign language. Uh, but the gifts got better over time. And the next one, I think, is hopefully less petty, but that was the ability to travel to new countries and new places and engage with different people in a way that I would not have been able to otherwise. So the first trip came after ninth grade when Senora Romeo took a group of us to her native Mexico. Uh, we went to a city called Cuernavaca, where A, we got to tour the capital and tour the pyramids, it was really beautiful, but also got to do a homestay for about a week. Um, so by necessity, because no one in the family actually spoke any English, uh, I was really forced to step up my game a little bit. And that was something that really accelerated, so foreign travel was just amazing. Um, I did a similar trip the next year. Uh, apparently some really enterprising trip planner convinced a bunch of GA parents that it would be a great idea to have 16 year olds spend a week in the rainforest next to an active volcano in Costa Rica. Um, we did that for a week. We got to really interact again with even more advanced Spanish with park rangers, people who helped us build this retaining wall that we built in the rainforest, and then we did a similar homestay with some intensive Spanish training uh, in a city called Torrealba. So there was one part about that trip that was really, it has stuck with me, um, and it is when I really started to appreciate the value of speaking foreign languages and being able to connect with people practically. So I called my dad one day after we'd come out of the rainforest where we had no reception. Um, I don't even think I had a cell phone then. Um, but I found out that my grandmother passed away. And uh, I was able to navigate the city with Spanish, and I had found the church, and I was able to communicate with the priest and explain to him that although I'm Jewish, not a lot of Jews in Costa Rica. Um, he helped me find some Old Testament Bible verses that I was able to, to read through and reflect on um, to honor my grandmother. Uh, so that was really impactful. So I rounded out the time of GA. Um, I finished the Spanish curriculum in 11th grade with um, AP Literature with Mrs. Harris. And that was really neat because you go from learning just the tactical ways to conjugate verbs and different words you can say in order to communicate to actually learning about a culture through a language of literature, reading novels in Spanish, which I always thought was really neat. Um, art, and even practicing salsa you know, in the classrooms from the stairs. Very cool. That's true. That's true. <laughs> and then the next year, uh, Mr. David, who I'm sitting across, across from tonight, which is really fun, I got to start picking up French in the, the one to honors class. So um, that class was neat for two reasons. A, it was an absolute blast. It was senior year. We had a really fun class. We were just reflecting on how great a roster we had. Um, we, it was equal parts learning French and equal parts learning how to play the tom on back. <laughs> and then sneaking away to Rich's Deli after school to get a cheesesteak, which I did earlier today. Um, but what I realized then, as I started to learn another language, that I had actually built this framework for learning languages, which is really neat. It's like once you've learned one, it's a lot easier to continue learning more. Your brain doesn't 
get full. It's like a sponge and gets more absorbed. It's just, it was a neat learning. It was encouraging, and that's when I realized as I go on to school, I'm probably going to focus on international studies, and I'm probably going to learn more languages. So, um, through all these different experiences in class and these trips, uh, I learned that there was a lot of value to learning foreign languages in the way it helps you connect with people. Um, one thing I also realized it's worth pointing out, given the makeup of the room, is that we would go to these different competitions around Montgomery County and different places at Plymouth White Marsh High School. And GA, we always did exceptionally well. Um, and everyone here is smart. GA is a really smart school, but other schools have really smart people too. So like, is it something in the water? I think not. I think we actually really do have a fantastic faculty. So maybe for a second we can just give a round of applause to all the wonderful <laughs> because my mom was just saying this to Mrs. Ayers before we started that, so I agree with mom. Okay, so I'll fast forward. Um, I graduated college in 2012 and studied international studies, Portuguese, Mandarin, um, I think Spanish back up for an easy day, which is a good move to go to college. Um, and I realized during college and during five years of working, I've got this ability to connect with people in a different way because I can sometimes speak their language or at least have a framework for understanding different cultures. Um, I'm in this MBA program now. It's got 350 students per class. It's 45% international, and the ability to just chat with people about all sorts of different experiences you've had, um, again, either through language or culture or travel, it just is really special. And I think it allows you to establish connections that I otherwise definitely would not have. Um, so I'll give you some highlights of some of the travel I've done. Just there, saluted to some of it, um, but it's, it is really neat. And it's just such a, it's been such an important part of my last couple of years that I encourage everyone to take advantage of any like opportunities to get to do some of these things. So I have led 54 friends from 15 countries on a trip to Israel. I watched Eagles play off football with the Philadelphia Eagles fan club in Rio de Janeiro. I camped out in the desert with Bedouin in Jordan, hiked a glacier in Iceland, explored the old city of Cartagena and the jungles near Medellin. Um, I had a strawberry daiquiri in Ernest Hemingway's favorite bar in Havana, and actually held a conversation entirely through Google Translate in St. Petersburg, Russia. Um, so I've made friends in places like Dubai, London, Barbados, Bermuda, Cape Town. Um, but what you'll notice is I never said anything about studying Hebrew or um, Arabic or Afrikaans or Russian. But it was really, again, this realization that whether or not you speak the language, the openness to engage um, is really what's key. And we have the technology now that we can engage with people in all sorts of languages. It's that mindset. And so at a time when I think there's just so much that really divides a lot of people in this country and other countries all over the world, um, language and this mindset of being open and wanting to engage gives us a real opportunity as a generation, I'm counting myself with you guys, um, to help bring people back together. And so I encourage you any opportunity you get, whether it's talking to an Uber driver or someone you see in the hallway or someone you meet at an airport, um, ask them where they're from, ask them about their family, what they care about, whether they've ever studied languages, where they want to travel to, um, and I promise you're going to find such a fascinating thing, which is that there's a lot more that brings us together than separates us which is forgotten a lot today. Um, so congratulations on all you've accomplished. It really is an achievement to be here. Um, I'm proud to come back, and I look forward to speaking with all of you afterwards. Thank you.